Welcome to Wellness Wisdom Wednesday. I'm Tiffany Brown Bush, and I'm helping you through hump day. And it's my privilege to be able to help super women live fit with happy hormones. So we're going to talk about, you know, what that means today uh, in this video update. Uh, before I go too far, though, the website is www.tiffanysfitforlife.com. And uh, please like this video, comment on it, share it, all that good stuff. I always appreciate that. So um, living fit, the fit for life uh, culture and approach. Thinking fit, moving fit, uh, eating fit. Okay, so you can have the right nutrition plan, you can have the right exercise program, but without that think fit part of it, it doesn't come together. So just always a reminder that that's where we're operating from. And whenever I talk about functional me medicine or being an integrative mental health therapist, or um, any kind of reference to like orthomolecular medicine, anything like that. It's that uh, Fit for Life um, has shifted over the, the last year or so. Um, and there's now uh, an emphasis on what are the underlying causes of what's going on with uh, our Fit for Lights. Um, and oftentimes what I'm finding is that there are a few different things going on. Um, <clears throat> most recently, you know, a lot of my clients have been going through the challenge, uh, the Fit for Life challenge, which is this 21 day challenge where you cut out certain foods. And um, these are foods that, you know, are established as being related to a lot of food intolerances or, or high um, incidence of genetic modification, just foods that don't typically work for people. So a lot of clients have been going through the challenge and pulling out these foods and then, you know, seeing that they're losing a significant amount of weight, um, but maybe there's still some lingering issues. Maybe there's still some issues with allergies or, or something like that. Um, and you know, with a lot of my clients, this is the case. Once we clean out the noise and you're not reacting to that Wendy's uh, cheeseburger or, um, uh, you know, Bojangles biscuit and Supreme meal or whatever it is, or the sweet tea or the birthday cake that you love so much. When you get that noise cleared out, and you're not reacting to food all the time. You realize, hey, shoot. Okay, now I know it's not what I'm eating. Something's really wrong with me. What's going on? And a big underlying cause for people can be yeast, yeast overgrowth. Um, that can cause a lot of digestive upset. And I've had a, a number of clients, you know, that have gone through this challenge and cleaned up things and are finding that there's still some things going on. And hey, they've got a little yeast overgrowth. And that's something that we're able to look at. And that's an underlying cause of... Um, digestive issues, headaches, uh, insomnia, um, dandruff, yeast infections, um, you know, just upset stomach and queasiness, mood issues. Uh, you, you know, it, it's amazing what what the gut can control when it comes to your brain. So um, sometimes what you're dealing with isn't what you think you're dealing with. I get a number of clients come into me telling me, you know, there are energy issues, constant fatigue, irregular menstrual cycles, spotting, um, those kinds of things. And when I run an adrenal panel, you know, the adrenals are worn out. Um, this client's really stressed and fatigued and evidently has been for a long time. And so their weight loss resistance wasn't you need to eat less and exercise more. It wasn't, you know, those two issues. But, but really, hey, your body is so beat up. It is in shutdown mode and it's not going to cooperate anymore. So um, a lot of what we're doing these days is looking at underlying causes. Um, and so if you are, are struggling with something like a, a yeast uh, issue, um, if you notice that you can't get rid of your dandruff, if you notice that you're, you have chronic yeast infections, if you um, constantly have digestive issues, I want you to kind of be thinking about... Um, maybe there's more going on here. And I want you to know that sugar and certain carbohydrates feed yeast. Now it's a little bit more complicated than that. And there is a yeast free protocol that I, I use with clients, but that those are culprits. Okay. So underlying causes, um, just one of the things that came up for me with this wellness wisdom um, update and then a few other things I wanted to tackle. I've got a number of questions these days. So Another thing that came up recently was, um, and I'll just throw this one out quickly, um, 
exercise over 35, okay, particularly for women. Um, you want to be mindful of as you age and your body's changing, you start considering things like, you know, um, just perimenopause being part of the future landscape of things. Um, you can't do what you were doing when you were 20 and 25 and running yourself to death or beating yourself up isn't going to be an option long term for you. And so I, I, I want people to exercise. Um, I'm, I, I, you know, obviously I, I um, you know, found it fit for life. I want people to exercise. I want it to be smart. You know, just doing something to death is never a good idea, right? Compulsively doing things is never a good idea. Um, exercise can be very oxidizing to the body, causes a lot of free radical damage. And for women who are over 35 years old, it can be very counterproductive. And those adrenals that we were just, you know, going over here um, can get really beat up uh, from all the over-exercising. All the current research shows high interval training, um, Tabata training, uh, metabolic training, anything other than run yourself to death or stay in the gym and park it on a, a treadmill or an elliptical machine for two hours. Any, anything, you know, anything other than that is a good idea. You definitely want to be exercising smart. What are the recommendations for a 35 year old woman or older? Four days a week of HIIT training, four days a week. Now, here's the thing, HIIT training. If you're not going like, you know, red um, when you're working out, if you're not taking that heart rate up, if you're not, you know, for sure that your heart rate is really where it needs to be, then you're not getting that metabolic uh, training effect that I'm talking about. So this isn't, you know, your typical, um, you know, mainstream gym uh, class workout or doing a circuit. That's not what I'm talking about. So, you know, high intensity training, we, we feature that at the Fit for Life studio. Those of you who work with me and work with Justin, my husband, know what I'm talking about. You know what that's supposed to feel like. That's that I'm about to pass out any minute now experience. And if you do it right, you don't have to be in the gym all the time. Um, and I am very much personally experimenting as much as I can with this approach because I was notorious for killing myself in the gym. And it's like, you know what? As my knees started to act up and I've never had knee issues and as things stopped healing properly and as I realized that this wasn't going to be an approach I could maintain when I hit 50 and then that might mean my weight would skyrocket, I realized I needed to get back to the books and the science and figure out what I needed to understand and do differently. Weights have got to be a part of the equation and working out smarts, the other piece of it. So that's a recommendation for women over 35. Okay, another question I have um, is uh, there's this big movement because of paleo. So I'm going to kind of hit two, two of them, two topics here at once. Um, big movement these days with butter and coffee. Um, and what is that about? Very quickly, because I try to make sure these videos don't go on forever and ever. Um, paleo is about getting back to the way we, our ancestors ate and eating real food and also eating foods that um, aren't processed and are, you know, um, cooked certain ways. It depends on how strict you are as paleo, okay? Um, whole food. Though you know, it's it's not a lot of processed things or aren't grains. It's it's very it's a restrictive approach to things, and it's used really um, therapeutically for a lot of you know autistic children. It's 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 used to heal people. You know, there are a number of ways to different ways to eat. Um, there are a number of different protocols. I have no problems with paleo. It's a little hardcore for women over thirty five. Um, so I go with the things that make sense for my age group. So, um, and the people that I serve, um, uh, you know, so, so that's where paleo, um, is, is kind of focusing. Okay. So you've got this butter in the coffee. Um, Dave Asprey is a biohacker. So just Google biohacker, Google Dave Asprey. I like him. I think he's a smart guy. Um, I carry some of his products. 
Um, you know, if you're going to do coffee, his is the coffee to do. Um, and so Dave likes paleo. Dave has a whole meal plan built around paleo um, concepts. And Dave believes in intermittent fasting. Google intermittent fasting. Okay, I will go ahead and say now. It is not approved for women over 35. It does not work. It messes up our hormones. Our estrogen does not like it. Um, a lot of these things are approved for men first, and then they find out later that it screws up our metabolism. So um, it's something I experimented with, and it's appropriate, you know, maybe late 20s, um, early 30s. But, but once you start hitting a certain point where hormones start to shift, it's not a good idea. Okay. You're going to have to um, Google what intermittent fasting is because I don't want to spend time here talking about that. But that's why they're putting butter in their coffee. They've taken paleo and intermittent fasting. And during that period of their fast, they're using the caffeine to get fat stores to release um, to suppress appetite. And they're using the butter in the coffee as a way to give them energy. Um, it has to be organic coffee, excuse me, not organic coffee, because the coffee that they're using is organic and it's non-toxic and all this other stuff. It has to be um, organic butter. It has to be butter from grass-fed cows. This is just not any old kind of butter, okay? This is a great way, if you don't do this right, to get a lot of toxins in your body. They do that and um, they put MCT oil, which I also carry. I, I love the... Um, Upgrade itself, bulletproof um, brand of MCT oil. It's a very high grade product. So um, they put that in the butter and the coffee, and they use that to fast um, until they eat, which oftentimes isn't until like 12 o'clock or sometimes one, depending on how the fasting works. That's why they're doing that. It's getting um, trickled over into the mainstream now, and people are doing it who aren't doing strict fasts. Um, if I have a coaching client that wants to experiment with this and she um, is of a certain age or not, I can customize the protocol to work. Um, but but it's not it's not my favorite protocol, you know, when it comes to adhering to it the way that it was originally created. There are some hacks you can do to it to make it so it's not so hard on women. Um, oh, 35 and older, or just women who have in, uh, issues with their adrenals or with their um, female sex hormones. Okay, so those, those were multiple topics. So I think I did really well with this one. This was in Wednesday. Um, covered a few different things. Uh, I appreciate you sending questions in or, or posting questions in the challenge. And um, until next week, please live fit, and I look forward to hearing from you.